Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday message. We hope that you are enjoying this wonderful day that the Lord has given us. And we are going to return again back to the book of James, the first chapter. And we're going to be looking at verses, I believe, verses 18 through 20. Amen. So just go grab your Bible or your iPhone or iPad, and we're going to sit down and discuss God's word. So I'm going to read our first verses here. So James chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. And it reads as thus. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Amen. All right. Continuing on in James. For those of you who are following, I like to just do a little light recap. We talk about how James, uh, in his writing, in his letter, uh, is very Jewish style. He's writing to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad in those days. And he uses and borrows a lot of language and style from the uh, Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. uh, which is which his um, brother, his half-brother Jesus, mm -hmm. preached the Sermon on the Mount. And so he borrows a lot of language where it's the Sermon on the Mount. The Beatitude talks about blessed yes. are the poor in yes. spirit, yes. blessed are the meek of the earth. Uh, blessed are those Holy who are persecuted Spirit. and all of those things. Mm -hmm. James mm -hmm. borrows that same language. And so he talks about blessed is the man who endures temptations Temptation. and trials of all types. Uh, but this is a little, little recap. It's sort of saying, with, but when a man is tempted and going through these various trials, he is not to say that he is tempted by God because God does not tempt anyone with evil. Neither is God tempted with evil. Uh, but also, he says, that we just lay the blame uh, of our temptations or entering into temptations on ourselves. On ourselves. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. says, but every man, in verse 14, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts or his own desires and enticed. And once he does that, once he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed, things are set in motion. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it says, when it's set in motion, then... Verse 15, then when lust have conceived, brings forth it brings forth sin. sin. Mm -hmm. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. And that's when he comes in verse 16, and he just wants to let them know. He makes an appeal to them. Brothers, do not err by attributing your faults and our faults to God. To do death. not err in that, mm -hmm. because verse 17 says, because every good gift and every, every perfect gift is comes above. down from above. It comes down from God, who is the source or the father of light. Mm -hmm. Everything good and everything pure and everything wonderful and everything holy and everything righteous comes from God. Amen. Uh, uh, so uh, he does not tempt us uh, to sin or do anything evil. And then that's when verse 18 comes as um, James is dealing with them, as he goes on with his letter, he says, verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have our own will or desire. God also has his own will or desire. And so this is the, the point that he's making here. Let's look at that word uh, own, of his own will. His will, the word means to will be disposed, mm -hmm. minded, intend. So it's our intention. So it's, we're talking about God's intentions here. Uh, it means determine, or it means also desires. So what we're seeing here is, is James making a contrast uh, between our will and God's will. Exactly. A man is drawn away into sin by his own desires. But James is saying that we are saved by God's own will or desire. And then also we learn in scripture that it is always God's desire or his will for mankind to be saved. He says that in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 through 4, it, you know, God, our Savior, will have all men 
save and come unto the knowledge of the truth. That is God's <coughs> desire for humanity is to be saved because there's only one God and there's only one mediator between God and mankind. And that mediator, mediator is the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all of us. So it's God's will for men to be saved. Then also, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse, uh, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 9 tells us that he is not willing, again, that's his will, mm -hmm. he is not willing that any should perish, but that all Hallelujah. should come to repentance. Yes. So yes. that is God's will. And in Ephesians chapter number 5, verse 1 tells us that we are adopted as children by Jesus Christ unto himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Mm -hmm. It was God's will, and it pleased him to do so. And so going back, this is what uh, James is driving at, that uh, it is our own wills that got us in trouble. It is God's <laughs> will that gets us out of trouble. Praise he the Lord begat that. us. That <laughs> word, that word begat, it, it means to breed forth. Mm -hmm. It means to generate, beget, or produce. This is the same word used in verse 15 of, of what James just wrote, bring forth. So this beget is the same word, bring forth. Some transla translations have give birth. Uh, for instance, when sin is finished, it brings forth or gives birth or begets death. That's what verse 15 would say. Uh, so basically our own wills or desires, when drawn away, starts a thing in motion, yes. it conceives sin, and when sin is finished, it begets or brings forth death. But God's will or desire produces or begets new Ooh. life in us. Praise the Lord for that. Our old wills bring death to us, but God's will mm -hmm. brings life or begets new life uh, for us. So we owe the origin of sin to our own desire. That's what James is driving at. Don't say, brothers, don't err. Do not blame your faults on God. So we owe our own, the origin of sin to our own evil desires. And we owe the origin of our spiritual new life to, the Lord. to God. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have sparks of divinity in us. As so <laughs> many teach, we have, we have God types in us. And somehow we just reach deep in there and find that polish it up and bring it out. Uh, no, James is saying that of God's own will, he begot us or we're born again. Mm -hmm. And then he tells us uh, with what? With the word of truth. Let's stop right there for a minute. I like the part where it says, we owe the origin of sin to our own de evil desires. Unfortunately, the my, our, our society now, uh, nobody is responsible for what they do. Yes nobody is responsible for what they do. It's always somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's mama's fault, it's daddy's fault, it's society's fault, it's poverty's fault, it's wealth's fault. Everybody is to blame. But our scripture says, we, we. are to blame. Yeah. I'm Tammy is to blame for what Tammy does. Nobody else is to blame for that. And that's what the scripture is, is bore out here in, in James. A man is drawn into drugs by his own desires. A man is drawn into fornication or adultery by his own desires. Exactly. A man is drawn into homosexuality or drunkenness or, or alcohol what, or anything. Whatever A man it is. is drawn away into lying, ste cheating, stealing, murdering by his own desires. He's drawn away. And so, yes, we can't say, well, I'm, uh, God made me this way or I'm predisposed. I mean, we're all predisposed to yes, sin. Yes, we are. All of yes, us have a yes, predisposition yes. to sin. But as we mentioned in past lessons, uh, thank God that we all don't crave everything. <laughs> Wouldn't that be horrible <laughs> if, you, if you crave that every? Would be, that would be a train wreck uh, on two legs. It would be a miserable life. Oh, my gosh. But the thing that, that our heart does go after, it's bad uh, that's what draws us away. Yes, yes. But, but thank God in our past lessons we talked about, there are ways that we can deal with that to the grace of God. Thank you. We can mortify our members. That which means are to kill. Earth, that means to kill that put flesh. Put it to death. Mm -hmm. uh, we are to submit ourselves unto God mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. resist the devil Run. and he'll flee. Run. And then the scripture says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. 
Uh, and so we ought to fall in love with God and his mm, word hallelujah. so that we can love God more than we love the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's what it is because we're all fallen creatures and, and something in this life, in this fallen world gets our attention. And then when we give into that something, that's what gets the ball rolling. Yes. Yeah, so that that's, we owe the origin of sin to our own to evil ourselves. desires. Right. Uh, because if we had sparks of divinity in us, wouldn't be we, wouldn't be, we wouldn't be drawn to some of the stuff that we're drawn no, to. No, no, no. But thank God that we are begotten again by the word of truth. Thank you, Lord. What James tells us here. Yes, yes. The Holman translation has this, by his own choice, by God's own choice, he gave us a new birth by the message of Praise the Lord. truth. Praise the Lord. Amen. By the word of truth. And as Jesus was standing before Pilate and uh, Jesus let him know that he was truth. And Pilate was like, well, what is truth? Mm -hmm. Well, you have many people in our day who ask that same question because there are so many belief systems out there. So many ideologies, so many isms, so many messages, so many voices. Uh, we hear people talk about uh, speak your truth and follow your truth. And so you have a truth and I have a truth and the other person has a truth. But no, the, the, here he says we're begotten by the word, <coughs> excuse me, of truth. There's only one truth. Right. Now that may seem narrow to many well, people. We're trying to be narrow minded. <laughs> but Jesus yes. says that he was the way, the truth, the truth and the life. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't say that about Jesus. Jesus said that about himself. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, since Jesus said it and, and backed it, then therefore we agree with that. You talk about positive confessions. You know, many times people talk about positive confessions. Well, this will certainly be a positive confession. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except by me. Then a positive confession, we can make it say, yes, Jesus Hallelujah. is the way, the truth, yes. and the life. Yes. And no one comes unto the Father except by him. That's the truth. So look, that's the truth. He talks about when his disciples, disciples, he said that you are clean by the words that I have spoken to you. My word is truth. Uh, Jesus talks about how his word is spirit and it is life. Uh, the scriptures talk about how the, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth comes by Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter four also tells us that the truth is in Jesus. Amen. And so if we are begotten by the word of truth, there is only one truth. Amen. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the death, burial, resurrection. It is the, the God made flesh and come to dwell among us and took our place on Hallelujah. Calvary, took our sins, took our punishment and brought redemption died in our place, tasted death for all men, yes, was buried in the grave, and rose the third day, and he, he forever lives to make intercession for us. That is truth. There is no other truth outside no. that. Uh, Jesus didn't come uh, speaking the truth. He was truth personified. And so when James talks about uh, that we are begot, that he begot us of his own will, and he begot us with the word of truth. Because of God's own will or desire, we are begotten or born again by the word of truth. Now, Peter tells us the same thing in his letter when he was writing to also the scattered abroad. Uh, uh, First Peter chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. All right. So we are begotten Amen. Hallelujah. unto a living hope. Mm -hmm. How are we begotten? By the resurrection, resurrection. of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If there from is no, the it, from the dead, if there's mm -hmm. no resurrection of Jesus, there is no begotting of us. <laughs> and then also look at verse 23, because you put, verse 3 and 23 together, you see we are begotten by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and then it shows that we are born again by the word of God. Huh. Okay, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible mm -hmm. by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. 
Hallelujah. We are born again. We are begotten Thank you, Jesus. by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are born again word by God. the word of God. Mm -hmm. the, the same word that Jesus said in John chapter 11, that he was the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. When he went to Lazarus' grave, Lazarus had been oh, yes. bound and dead Hallelujah. for four days. <laughs> and they even told him, don't you know he stinks by now? Yeah. No problem with Jesus. He goes in and by his word, he says, Lazarus, come forth, mm -hmm. and he raised Lazarus from the dead. That same word, the word of truth, raises us from the dead spiritually. We go from death to life. Thank you, Jesus. We go from darkness to light mm -hmm. by the word mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. And so we see here that this is what James is talking about. We are begotten, or in other words, born again by the word of truth. And then he did it for a reason. Yeah. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures you, of course that creatures means creation mm -hmm. uh, the first fruits of his of all of his creations uh james is mentioning a, a first fruit now this phrase is used often by the apostle paul is used once uh to talk about a fellow by the name of uh apanatus apanatus that's found in romans chapter number 16 verse number five Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Apatitus, who is the first fruit of Achaia unto Christ. He's the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. Mm -hmm. Some translations, modern translations, say he was the first convert. So that would All be, right. again, an example of the first fruit. Thank you, Lord. He said that also about the house of Stephanus in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 16, verse number 15. 16, verse 15. Okay. Give me a moment. I thought I had it. It says, I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Do I have the right one? Uh, yeah, first fruits of Achaia. Okay. Stephanus, the house of Stephanus. Okay. That ye submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helps with us and labors. So, so the house of Stephanus, they were the first fruits. Mm -hmm, first Again, converts. some of the first converts. Uh, Paul founded the Corinthian church mm -hmm. uh, in Acts chapter number 18. If you want to go and look up that background, no, I'm at you, but I'm oh, oh. the watching, viewing all this, <laughs> okay. uh, just to make a connection. The, the, the church of Corinth was founded by the apostle Paul. And you can read about that Acts chapter number 18, make them do a little homework. Yes, of course. Put things together. Always homework. And then also Paul uses this phrase also in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, and then verse 23, talking about the fact that Jesus is the first fruits of those raised from the dead. Yes. But now is Christ risen from the dead <clears throat> and become the first fruits of them that slept. Verse 23. So now what? is Christ. Christ is risen from the dead, and he is the first fruits of them that slept. All of those who have died and gone to the grave, uh, Hebrews chapter two tells us that he tasted mm. death for every man. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, notice because First uh, Corinthians fifteen talks about death swallowing up uh, individuals. Well, death has swallowed up everyone because of Adam. By one man, sin came into this world. It entered this world, and death right along with it. And that every last one of us died. And death holds us in the grave mm -hmm. until the end. Well, Jesus is the first fruit. He tasted death. It was not possible for death to hold him. No, sir. And so he is the first fruits of those who were slain. First but point. every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits afterward, that they are Christ at his coming. So every man in his own orders, Christ is the first fruit mm -hmm. or the source of resurrection. Mm -hmm. And then all of those uh, at his coming because that's when the resurrection is going to take place uh, at his at his coming. And so we see that the, that's laid out uh, clearly. That's how the word first fruits uh, is used. And of course, it denotes that which is first taken in anything. We know in the Old Testament, the tithe was the first fruit. Yes. They gave of the first fruit of their harvest, yes. the first fruit of their increase. Uh, and so that's what it's using here. Now, when, when James uses this, this phrase, the first fruit, we see how Paul used it. But when James used it, it could mean one of two or 
both of these things. Okay. And let's look at a couple of things that he could be referring to. Uh, because number one, let's look at it. The early believers who heard the apostles preach the gospel were first or earliest partakers of the benefits of the gospel. Okay. Obviously, again, this, is, this letter was written 2,000 years ago. It was not written yesterday. And so if we look at the setting that it was written in, and we also know who he's talking about. So, so quite naturally, the, the first church would be the first fruits of all of those. That makes sense. That, that come okay. along. So Paul uses this phrase uh, when referring to, as we mentioned, the house of Stephanus being the first convert in Corinth, and Apanateus was the first convert in Asia Minor, and Jesus being the first rise from the dead. So that's one when, he, when James is talking about the that the first fruits that you, it says that, um, it says, uh, 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 verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creation. So out of all of God's creation, these, uh, these the, he was writing to are the first fruits. Another way that we can look at that, number two is, James was writing to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Mm -hmm. Now, who would be the 12 tribes scattered abroad? The Jews. The Jewish people, Jewish believers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, these were early Jewish believers. This letter is not addressed to Jew and Gentile mix mm -hmm. like the letters where Paul wrote, because you had a mix in, in Ephesus and in Corinth and in Galatia. And then these were all, they were a Jew Gentile mix. But James is specifically talking to these mm -hmm. Jewish people. Christian believers, believers mm -hmm, scattered mm -hmm. abroad in this region. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't glean from what he's saying to them, exactly. but just to give us a context of who he's talking about so that we can understand when you get to specific verses like this, talking about the first fruits, you and I certainly would not be the first fruits <laughs> no. of God's creation. No. Uh, so there, th th what he was saying is that this, this would be, it could literally be referring to these Jewish believers as the first fruits, because not only is the gospel to the Jew first, then to the Greek, but then also it was the born again experience that literally began with Jews in Jerusalem and then spread mm -hmm. to the uttermost parts of the earth. We know that in the 120 uh, uh, in the upper room were all Galileans. Mm -hmm. And then as the day of Pentecost fully came, and they were there, and the Holy Spirit was, was poured out upon them, and they all began to speak in different languages, different tongues. And then there were also devout Jews. Right. They weren't believers yet, but they were devoted to the Jewish system and law. They were there from all places, wherever they lived on earth. They came there for Pentecost. And they heard these Galileans speaking to them right. in their own languages, the wonderful works of God. Right. And then many of those were added to the church, many of those Jews, but they still were Jews. And then we learn by the time we get to the end of Acts 2 that, that, that 3,000 souls were added, and, but they were all Jews. And then later, 5,000 souls were all added, but they were all Jews. So that would be the first fruits gotcha. of God's creation. Got it. And then, of course, as time went on, the, the gospel went to the, went to the Sumerians, just like Jesus said. That it would be, it would go to the Jew, to Jerusalem, to Judea, then Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the earth. So then it went to Samaria with Philip, and then it went to the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, that's why James appeals to these individuals as the first fruits of uh, of God's creation. So then, verse number nineteen comes, and he says, "Wherefore, my beloved brethren," James had already appealed to the brothers not to err. In verse number 16, don't attribute our faults to God. Don't err, brethren. So now he makes another appeal to them. Since God is the only source of good, since he tempts no man with evil, right? since he has begotten us with the word of truth, mm -hmm. that's the ideal here. Since he has done that, now let every man be swift to hear. Because all throughout scripture, God always has to do the work in us first. Mm. And then he makes requirements. Mm -hmm. Many of the letters are laid out that way. Ephesians uh, is a good example. Ephesians has six chapters. The first three chapters are all theological. Right. What God has done 
in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. And then the last three chapters are all practical. What we should do because, because of, of what God has the done. The wherefores and therefores. Now that we are born again, mm -hmm. now that we are begotten by the word of truth, now that we are new creations, created in the image of him who died for us and rose from the grave, now that that has happened, now let us do God's will. Okay. Let every man be swift to hear. Here. Because, you know, uh, being honest, as, as we read earlier in the chapter, it's our own desires that get us into trouble. So just left to our own devices and our own selves, we're not very good at being <laughs> swift uh, listeners. Uh, humans don't do very good at listening to one another. Not too well. That's one of the number one problem in, in marital relationships. Any relationship. And that's the number one problem <laughs> in any relationship yes. is listening. You're not listening to me. What are these on my sides of my head then? I'm listening. Are you listening to the words what, that is coming out of my mouth? Surfer, you didn't hear what I just said. I heard what you just said. All of these kind of things. These are <laughs> these, these ring out in every household. You're not listening to me. That's not what I said. I You're didn't say misrepresenting it right. my words. I didn't say it right. Don't read into it. Don't read into my words. <laughs> Don't put words in Don't my mouth. Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> Don't read between the lines. Yeah. You know, so he that's Paul and James has given us some good practical yes. advice here. Yes, he is. Let Praise us be Lord. swift to hear. Lord, help that us. word swift means prompt, mm -hmm. ready. Mm -hmm. That word here doesn't mean again just the audible These sound. Here. <laughs> it doesn't just mean the audible sound, it means to understand, it means to sink down into the ears. Mm, I like uh, that. The, the, the phrase is used often and certainly sometimes throughout Revelation. Uh, Jesus, when he's talking to the seven churches, he said, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Mm -hmm. And certainly we should, as Christians in our day, uh, there's a lot of voices Ooh. and a lot of noise yes. in our day. As we mentioned earlier, a lot of isms and ideologies and belief systems and, and conflicting narratives. A lot of them. We, we, we have TV on all the time, 24 hours. Wow. And then everybody has their own personal isolation device, I like to call it. <laughs> and so everyone's tied into their social media mm. and into wh whatever social media platform you're on. And then news sources. And then we, we get voices coming from all directions. Uh, and, and even in music. In music. Coming through, there's messages coming through music, uh, coming out, movies, coming out of Hollywood. You pick up a book, it's coming through, it's all types of media. There are messages. In a, in a pluralistic society, yes. there's a lot of voices. Well, uh, James, in the context, is talking about God of his own will mm. begetting us with the word of truth, then certainly in that context, we need to be swift to hear Glory. truth. Amen. We yep. need to be swift to hear. Yep. What are some things we need to be swift to hear? Number one, God. We need to be swift to hear God, mm -hmm. not be resistant to him. Uh, we already learned that there's only one God. Yes. And there's only one mediator between God and mankind. Man there are not Jesus. a multitude of mediators between God and man. They're all roads do not lead to heaven. No, they don't. Uh, but we hear this in our, in our culture, in our society. And many times we as Christians, uh, we, uh, in our attempt to be nice <laughs> and what we go, you know, tolerant, we have to be tolerant of other people's belief systems. And you, and that's true in a classic sense. You know, tolerate just means to bear with, and we do. We, obviously, this country is a is a nation built on religious freedoms, hmm. and 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 people have the right to believe something or nothing in America. But still, there's only one God, Amen. And there's only one truth. It's the gospel. I don't know that people don't like to hear that, but we need to be swift to hear God, Amen. Hear His voice, Hallelujah. and how do we hear from God? Who? <laughs> We hear from his word. Mm -hmm. We hear uh, through our prayer. We hear through good preaching. Oh, those are the ways we hear from God. Yeah, we hear from God. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, now God can do anything he wants. Sure. Uh, and I'm not telling God what he can or cannot do because we know that God can speak. He spoke out of heaven. He spoke yeah. audibly. And I'm telling today, he can speak audibly. Yeah, he can but, speak through dreams as well. He can speak through dreams. Speak sometimes. Through, yes, but, yes. But, but not every dream you have is from God. Some no. of them might be just from pizza. 
<laughs> but unfortunately, in our right. church world, every dream every that a person has, God, it's like, no, no. it's not necessarily. And then there's some people who say, no, God doesn't speak audibly at all. Sure. Well, no, you can't sure. say that either. Sure. Uh, you know, so, but we have to, but we certainly know that his word. Yes, primarily. You can go there for sure. His word <laughs> is sure. his will. For sure. And so we must be attuned. Hallelujah. We must be swift to hear yes. God. And then also we must hear the truth. Uh, because they're not uh, uh, all truths. Multitude of truths. Multitude of truths. There's absolute truth. Mm -hmm. And I know the current modernistic, uh, 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 neo-Marxist climate that we Does live not. in. Hate the ideal mm -hmm. of absolute truth. That's foolish. You're narrow-minded. You're bigoted. You're all of that stuff. Well, okay. Jesus said that the road is narrow that leads to eternal life. Right? And, he, and, we, and so we are trying to be narrow-minded so, you know, <laughs> when it comes to the Sermon on the Mount. That's for sure. Yeah. It, it, so, so we need to hear a truth. Thank you, and, Jesus. And the scriptures are replete mm. with saying, thy word is true. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4 said, the truth is in Jesus. Jesus himself says, he didn't I, say, I know the way, mm -mm. the truth. He said, I am the I way, am. Hallelujah. the truth, Thank you, Jesus. and the life. Uh, John 1 says that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth James comes Jesus through Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is a personification of truth so we need to be swift to hear that and then we also need to be swift to hear our instructors as you mentioned the ministers who are faithful ministers who are committed to handling the word amen. of god amen. without deceit amen. that we're just going to go to the word and we're going to deliver the word of god as it is indeed the word of god and not the word of men i'm not going to add it into it and i'm not going to take anything from it uh, so we need instructors good instructors uh, to, to teach that ephesians 4 plainly says that gifts were given to the church Thank apostles, you. pastors, prophets, teachers, evangelists, so that they can equip the saints, so that the saints can exactly. do the work in the ministry, so the body of Christ can grow. So we need these things, but but we need them to preach the word of truth. So we need to be swift to listen and mm -hmm. hear, and then we need to be swift to hear each other. Okay. As we mentioned earlier, <laughs> right. communication is a big problem in many relationships, and certainly also in our political climate right now. We're all just yelling at each other across the bow, Everybody's yelling and screaming. Angry and, mad. and it's like, my goodness, like obviously we're missing something in the communication. Or we're so not maybe listening. We just, uh, we're not listening. So maybe we just need to back up and say, okay, just let me listen to you. Let Tell me why you believe what you believe. And let's have a conversation rather than shouting, shouting at each other. Shouting and yelling. And, and we already have our minds made up. And I know what you believe. You're. It's, we need to be well, well, swift to hear one well, another that part of communication is over we we <coughs> the one part of communication that's in full blast is just this oh yeah but not this we don't listen to each other yes. we're mad all the time we need to be, be quick to hear Lord, so let me run through that list again we need to be quick to hear god mm -hmm. i like what that. his word says man we need to quick to hear truth jesus said my sheep hear my it's voice important, important, important it's important there's a lot of voices out there but we need to hear truth we need to be quick to hear it we need to hear from good instructors of the word of God. God put that in the body for a reason. And certainly we need to listen to one another mm -hmm. so that we can understand one another, get along better with one another. Mm -hmm. and let the other person say mm -hmm. what they sure. feel and think. And right. Mean. It's okay to give you that space yeah. to speak. Amen. Rather than me telling you what you <laughs> Right. No, I'm going to tell you what you were thinking. <laughs> Come on. Uh, here, men have two ears. Here's a saying. We've oh, all yeah. heard it. Men have two ears, but one tongue that they should hear more than they speak. Then also, uh, here's a funny one. The ears are always open. Right here we are, all out in the open. <laughs> Ever ready to receive instruction. But the tongue is surrounded with a double roll of teeth to hedge it in yes. and to keep it within proper yes. bounds. Yes. That tongue, as James mentions in chapter three, <laughs> is a world of iniquity. Oh, my goodness. You know, it could just, it, it, it sets on fire the, the course, course of, of hell. hell. A little member in the body, but it can do a lot of damage. And so God put it behind teeth. A bar of teeth. <laughs> Some strong teeth. And so that's what he says. Be, be quick to hear, swift to hear, swift. and slow to speak. Uh, be slow at speaking. Always popping off. Those who are hasty in their speech are often of an angry disposition. Um, let me back you up. I hate to keep backing you up, but I wanted to make a comment on oh, yes. why do you think believers can be 
uh, guilty of being dull in their hearing at times. Sometimes that is true. Not sharp, not picking it up, but but kind of dull. What do you think some of the reasons? I'm sure there are other reasons. There are a lot of reasons. There, but what, always but reason. what do you think would be a reason, one reason? Well, there's many reasons for sure with anything, but I, it, something comes to mind. Hebrews chapter number five, if you would go to Hebrews chapter number five, um, because I because I mentioned also there are so many voices out there, so many voices. Hebrews five, and as Christians, uh, uh, Hebrews five near the end of the chapter, okay. uh, twenty six and twenty seven, I think, or something like that. You'll see it. Oh, okay, go to twelve. Okay, and open up twelve, and we'll see what. Yep, perfect. Uh, because we talked about how there's so many different voices out there. And if we don't know this voice, the word of God, Jesus said, it, my sheep hear my voice. Mm. If we don't know this voice, we'll listen to the others. And mm. even when we come to church and we'll sit there and we'll say, well, I went to church and I heard the word of God. But we, we usually wind up believing something more than In his word. His word. Mm. Look and see what Hebrews 5.12 5, 12 says, for when... For when, for when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So here, they, the, the Hebrew believers have been around for a long time, and, and the writer is writing to them saying, by now you should have been teachers, mm -hmm. but you have need that someone teaches you the fundamentals of the word of God. Go ahead. And are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. Keep going. Mm -hmm. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who have by reason of use have their senses exercised, I like that, to discern both good and evil. The uh, mature Christians, mature mm. believers uh, are, are those who by reason of use of the word of God and life experience good, good have you. their exercises or their senses exercised so that they can discern between good and mm, evil. Mm, mm. Uh, but if you don't do mm, that, mm, if mm. your senses are not exercised oh, in the Lord. word of God, oh, my Lord. then sometimes we're, we're dull, dull to, yes. even if we go to church uh, every Sunday regularly, sure, sure. and we're not really hearing, like the scripture says, mm. he that has ears, let him hear, let him contemplate, think about, let it sink down, let meditate uh, on what the spirit is saying. To the church. But along with that comes discernment. Mm -hmm. You know, along with hearing and reading, you put those two together, it gives you better discernment. Yes. And I think that's what's missing too. You don't know that the danger is coming. You don't know that the danger is in your house. You don't know that, that you're sitting in the seat of the scornful. Yes. You don't even know you're doing that right. because you're not uh, exercised as, as um, the book of Hebrews is saying. Yeah. We're not exercised in it. And unfortunately, many, many times discernment is taught as if it's a feeling. No, no, no. I no. felt something about that person. I felt, no, the Hebrews From is telling scriptures. us by having our, our senses exercised in the word of God, then we can discern. And then also 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talks about how discernment is part of the gifts of the spirit. Mm -hmm, sure. So it's, it doesn't come from a feeling. Mm -mm. It's what the Holy Spirit and, and exercise coupled with the word of God, then we can discern or distinguish and, uh, and discriminate between good and evil. We yes. know what's right so and wrong based on what the word of God yes. says, not based on how I feel about yes. a yes. situation. Yes. Yes. And, yes. And, and so that's unfortunately, uh, that's why people are not swift to hear mm. uh, sometimes. And so that's when, uh, going back to James, very good question. Going back to James, that's when he says, so we need to be swift to hear and slow to speak. Two ears, one mouth. That word, uh, because it, 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 usually that the, this, the harsh and rash speaker gives itself, lends to uh, uh, anger and anger dis disposition. So he said, be slow to wrath. Slow to wrath, oh boy. So let's, let's look at this, be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. 
This is all good, sound, oh instructional Lord. advice, yeah, practical, <laughs> instructional <laughs> advice. The word wrath is orge. It means desire. It means violent passion, abhorrence, indignation, vengeance. It's very strong words. Uh, the Bible talks about anger. Anger would be uh, one of the things that, that a person is drawn away by by their own desires. Their own desires. I talked before about when, when I was younger, growing up as a, as a kid and as a young man, I had an anger problem. You know, a lot of people who meet me today, oh, how, I, I can't see that. I'm like, well, it's not for you to see. I'm telling you, <laughs> I knew what <laughs> I grew God up God is with. much better. Yeah, I mean, if, I, if I'm 59 years old now and I still had the same anger issue mm. that I had then, then there's no growth in Christ. Uh, but, but my point is, anger, I was drawn away. I wasn't usually a person who just started stuff because I'm quiet by nature, you know, laid back. So I didn't start it. But sometimes when somebody would egg me on and keep egging me, and then finally I would hold it and hold it, and then it would blow up and it'd be a volcano. <laughs> and then I'd be mad for a couple of weeks, you know. But still, it's anger, whether you do it soon or whether it's smoldering or whether whatever it is, it's a temptation in my flesh. It's, mm. All of us are hit by something when we something. come to this world. When we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity, we come into this world got something. with something. And so there are some things that draw you away into anger and cause you, and then if that anger is nurtured and held onto, it can grow into wrath. Oof. And that's what James is saying, be slow to wrath. Uh, uh, because a lot of times, people don't really look at anger as all that bad, you know, because it's part of your human nature. So we use it, you know, we use it to, if somebody's getting on my nerves, I want to get you away from me. <laughs> you blow up. Yeah. If I'm not getting my way, then I'll start making demands, I get angry, people get nervous and start, uh, uh, you know, complying to it. So it's used and they don't really see it as as bad as murder. But Jesus plainly tells us that anger is what leads to murder. Yes. Uh, then then Ephesians chapter four tells us, be angry, but don't sin. Right. And then he says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Mm -hmm. If we hold on to anger, that's when it develops into wrath. Absolutely. And when wrath develops, it can absolutely do no good. That's when he's talking about um, he that is soon angry deals foolishly. Mm. Proverbs 14, 14 17. 17 says. But James uses this also, be slow to wrath, because his, remember, this, he list, gives a list. He said, be quick to hear. If we want to hear truth. Yes. Then be slow to speak. You don't want to always be putting your foot in your mouth. <laughs> and then be slow to wrath. Mm -hmm. Because these kinds of things interfere with the reception of truth. All right. Because we're begotten by the word of truth. So we want to hear that. We want to live in that truth. We should lay aside all anger and wrath, particularly for the purpose of receiving the truth. Thank you, Lord. Anger normally clouds our thinking. We don't think straight. There's even phrases used. I just saw red. You know, that's not, <laughs> not good. good. You, no. you got to that point. We don't want him to see So red. you can't think straight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We need a calm mind to investigate and receive the truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we certainly, this is a message to our generation. Oh, we need it. Could use, because oh, that's yes. what we're seeing taking place out in the streets. Ooh. They just see red. I mean, people are angry and nobody's stopping to think and evaluating. And as the old phrase, let cooler cool heads, heads prevail. prevail. Uh, yeah, that's, that's be, going on. This is window. what James is saying. He's that's cautioning gone. us mm. against moving to wrath. Mm -hmm. Let's be slow to wrath. Mm -hmm. Because as Proverbs 14, 17 says, he that is soon angry deals foolishly. So let us be slow to wrath so that we can have cooler head, so that we can listen to one another, yep. so that we can hear from God, God, so that we can recognize truth. And mm -hmm. all of these things. Mm -hmm. And then verse number 20, he tells us the reason why he wants us to be slow to wrath. Verse 20, because the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. It just does not. Mm -hmm. Do we get angry? Yes. Yes. That's why uh, 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 Ephesians plainly says, be angry, but don't yes. sin. Right. And there are other variations with that. There are some people who say, well, be angry and that'll keep you from sinning. Be mad at a thing and keep you. But certainly there are, there are injustices in the world because we live in a fallen world. 
Now, the narrative of the world today is we still talk about that there are injustices because of racism, and usually it's only from one direction because of racism of white America. They lay all the blame of white sure. America. That is not an accurate assessment sure. of the gospel. Yeah. As we mentioned, all of us have sinned. Yes. Not just Come one group of, of people. Of yes. So there are yes. many injustices. There are injustices in the black community, blacks against other blacks, white people against whites, oriental age, just all of people. that. It's people because people. Because we live in a fallen world. Absolutely. Because we're sin touched, every last one of us. Not No one gets an escape or an exception. So there are a lot of injustices in the world and unfairness and inequities. We know that and mm -hmm. we would not deny it. So sometimes uh, anger against those inequities drives people to do mm -hmm. the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you start a cause or an organization. Mm -hmm. And laws and can write, be, become changed. Laws can become changed. Uh, or, uh, changes or, or put can in be place. Made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because somebody was angry at the injustice and stood up and did something mm -hmm. about it. Uh, not out of control, but in the parameters of the law. Child, child um, labors. Child, child labor, labor laws. laws, yes. Somebody got angry that it wasn't fair for children to be, you know, working in factories all hours. Mm -hmm. Somebody got angry about that and they changed they it. So that's change. that's good anger. Yeah, and the child, the, the trafficking, sex know, trafficking, sex trafficking. Oh lord, you know, people get incensed and outraged that's about what's right. going on, mm -hmm. and they step mm -hmm. up and they do things to rescue children. Sure. That's all good. good. And fine. That's what it's mm -hmm. talking. Mm -hmm. But wrath, that's what he's talking about here. Wrath is a different category altogether. It's uncontrolled. And he says the wrath of man That's does not, not work the righteousness of God. It just doesn't. For man's wrath, another translation says, for man's wrath does not accomplish God's oh, I like righteousness. That. I like that. Because wrath normally does not compel one to keep the law, but to break it. <laughs> and then also wrath does not embrace truth, but many times opposes it. What we see in Jesus's day. The scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they right. were always angry with Jay, hated him for no reason. Sure. And they were constantly opposing him. So that's, again, an idea of wrath. We will not have this man rule over us. When James went and preached to the, uh, that synagogue that had the, the libertine, had five mm. different sects mm -hmm. in the synagogue, mm -hmm. uh, they hated what James told them. And the scripture says they gnashed their teeth and they stoned this man. They hated him. And so that's sometimes what that's what wrath will oppose the truth rather than embrace it. And so here we see that wrath leads to sin, not to righteousness. That's what what James is warning against here. And we'll finish up with this example. Uh, let's look at Numbers, chapter number twenty. Numbers, chapter number twenty, to give an example of what James is saying that the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. And we're going to use Moses as an example. The scripture says of Moses that Moses was the meekest man on the earth. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's what the scriptures. Moses spent time with God. He spent two sessions of 40 days and 40 nights in the very presence of God. Ah, Lord, who? To where he didn't have to eat or drink because ah, he was in Lord. the presence of light. Okay. He didn't have to eat or drink for 80 days because oh. he was with the oh, creator. Oh, man. That's all right. So much so that when he came down, his face glowed and they had to put a shield a uh, over a veil over his mm -hmm. face and all mm -hmm. that. You know, so that's the point. Meekest man in the presence of God, face to face with mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Friend of God. Friend of God. Mm -hmm. Moses. Moses. Let's see what the, an example of Moses. Let's go to uh, Numbers chapter 20, mm -hmm. start at verse number one. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. So this okay. is this chapter is starting off kind of sad. Sure. <laughs> yes. Miriam, Miriam Moses, big sister. Big sister. Yes. The one on the Ten Commandments who washed the basket down the, down the Nile River. <laughs> yes. That's big sister. That's big sister. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he loved her sister. He had, of course, he had, he of had course. Aaron and Miriam. Well, she died, so this mm -hmm. can't be good. Mm -mm. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses uh -oh. and against Aaron. So now it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Now no the water. folks, the folks no don't come against Moses and Aaron. And the people chode with Moses, mm -hmm. chided with him, argued with him, mm -hmm. and spake 
saying, would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. That's not good. That's it, not good. It's talking about uh, the, the revolt with Datham, Korah, and, and Abiram, and all of them, mm -hmm. and the earth opened up and swallowed right? up people, and 250 people died in the whole congregation. He said, we, we, we should have died back then. This, this, this is harsh. This yes, is cruel. Yes. They were not slow to hear <laughs> no. and slow to speak. No. They, they weren't listening and they and were they, talking they, and they're accusing uh, uh, Moses and Aaron. Saying too much. And then they go on and says, and wherefore have you made us to come out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It is, it is, no, place it is no place of seed or figs or vines or oh, pomegranates. Man. Neither is there any water to drink. So, I mean, they're just laying into Moses. And <laughs> they were upset. They're just laying into it. <laughs> And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto, unto them. them. So they handled it the right way. Yeah, they went to the Lord. They ran to the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's what we ought to do. Thank you, Jesus. When folks come against us. We don't need to lash back out. No. We need to take it to the take Lord. Take it to the and Lord. So they did that. Lord well, look at us. the Lord's uh, uh, solution to the problem. Verse number seven. It says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, take the rod, that same rod, that was a snake in the beginning, and mm -hmm. that he stretched out the part mm -hmm. of the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Take that rod and gather thou the assembly together, you and Aaron your brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. What did he instruct them to do? To do to the speak. rock. Speak, speak, speak. speak. Before their eyes, while the people are looking. At while them. everybody's there. And it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so shalt thou give the congregation and their animals to drink. And Moses took the rod. Sounds so so far so, so good. Far, Sounds so like good. he's being obedient. I like Moses it. took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, this is when it starts to take an ugly turn. Hear now, you rebels. Oh. Must we fetch you water out of the rock? Moses had had enough. Yeah. My sister's dead. Y'all fussing at me about water and talking about <laughs> you should have died out in the wilderness and you're criticizing me and you get and I'm dealing with this for all these years. And so now God tells him to take the rod and speak to the rock. And Moses just had enough. You know how it is sometimes. Absolutely. You know that the Lord tells you to do something, but then you just, I, you know, this is my chance. So he got the rod and he says, Hear ye rebels. Right. Shall we now wait a minute? What's this we? <laughs> shall we fetch you water, water out of the rock and moses lifted up his hand uh -oh. and with his rod he smote the rock twice oh he was me man moses was fuming he had it and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their animals also mm -hmm. and the lord spake unto moses uh -oh. and aaron and this is what he said because you believe me not what do you mean lord i didn't believe you i got i gathered the people I took the rod. I took the rod. Wasn't there a whole lot of water gushing out? What do you mean I didn't believe you? No. He said, because you did not believe me Here it is. to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. My Lord. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land mm. which I gave Ooh. unto them. Mm -mm -mm. The wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. No. No. Moses became so angry that he he was not allowed to go into the land that promised that, that the lord promised abraham and his descendants and it's it's sort of sad sometimes you know as a human you're reading it and you're like wow god you could have cut him some slack. <laughs> that's how we are as humans i know when i first all read that, that as a young person i went oh wow moses done did all that for the lord and he made one little mistake but i understand it now i know yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and so that's the wrath. And it, 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 I'm just trying to paint a picture of what James means when he said mm -hmm. the wrath mm -hmm. of man does not work the righteousness of God. And no, let's support that with Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy yeah. 32, 48, right? Yep. And the Lord spake unto Moses that self same day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, Arabium, unto Mount Nebo. I didn't pronounce that right, which is in the land of Moab that is over against Jericho and behold the land of Canaan, which I gave unto the children of Israel for a possession and die in the mount, whether thou goest up 
and be gathered unto thy people as Aaron thy brother died in, the, in Mount Hor, Hor, and was gathered unto his people. Because ye transgressed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither into that land which I give the children of Israel. And so scripture clearly tells us that God gives an explanation because you trespass my word. And it's, it was harsh. We think it's harsh, but God is righteous in everything that he does. And so we should not err in saying that it's not fair because that's mm. the, what the natural human response would be like, well, that ain't fair. <laughs> Because, you know, we always talk about what's fair to, that ain't right, all the stuff that Moses did for God, and that's the way he treated them. And, no, we didn't say Moses is lost. We're just saying Moses didn't enter into the land. Mm -hmm. And neither are we criticizing Moses. We're just saying that what James is saying is true. The wrath of man will not work the righteousness mm -hmm. of God. Lord, yeah. If it, if it mm -hmm. damaged and caused trouble for Moses, it'll show enough cause trouble for us as well. Uh, if we give in to our anger and let our anger develop into wrath and take matters in their own hands, the scripture says, vengeance is mine. I said the Lord, I will repay. But when we feel like you ain't going, you ain't going to treat me like that. <laughs> you, you know who you talking to? <laughs> you better recognize. Yeah, we use all those phrases. You yeah. better recognize. Or, you better ask you somebody. Better ask somebody. <laughs> Don't you know who I am? Oh, oh, none Look. of that. Me. That that's, that's getting in God's way. And, and that kind of vengeance that kind of wrath, that kind of anger. But when we say things like that, we put ourselves above God, yes. like what Moses did. He put himself he above God. God. He didn't sanctify God. He said, what are we going to do? I mean, when we make those kind of claims, right. like you better recognize, uh, you ask somebody, we, we put ourselves above we and we speak harshly. And so that, that doesn't help at all. Amen. It does not help. So we can learn mm. from what James is teaching this Lord, early we need uh, it. community. We need it. Be swift to hear. Oh, Lordy. Hear God's word. Hear his truth. Hear one another. Mm. Be slow to speak. Help us. Don't put your foot in your mouth all the time. Think <laughs> before you talk. Think. And then be slow to wrath because the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Well, you know, I'm going to have to use our little example for about a hundred years ago. Oh my goodness. Well, I want to share it with the people. We want to put this oh, into yeah. practice, this right? Up. Okay. So we were married. This is our early marriage, mm -hmm. early marriage. And we had this little house and it was a little old bedroom. And it was in the days where women wore stockings to church. They don't wear stockings to church anymore, but it was when we had to wear stockings to church. And so Sunday morning, we getting ready. And so I'm sitting on the bed and I went to, to throw my stockings out. I don't know if you ladies do that, but anyway, you throw your stockings out so that you can, you know, shimmy those, shimmy them up. So the bedroom is little. So I did that. My husband went into the closet, you know, the bedroom closet. I, think I was trying to get my shoes. He was trying to get his shoes out of the closet. You know, sometimes the bottom of the, um, the, the closet doors can be kind of rough. So here, here's my stockings. He opens up the closet door and just totally just rips up the only pair of stockings I had. That we was were all. Broke in those days. And when we was broke, broke, broke. And I said, I can't believe it. You just ripped up my stockings. And I know he didn't mean it. So, and he had just gotten his, his shoes. What did you do? I they were called the, the, the soles at the bottom. No, but flat. tell them the shoes, the name they're, of the shoes. They're floor shine wing they're tips. They're floor shine like wing tips. And those are great you know, shoes. I saved up a lot of money to buy those <laughs> shoes. So he had just gotten them restitched. So I'm fussing about my stockings. He took that brand new restitched shoe and slammed it on the floor and bust up all the soles. And the shoe now was talking like this. I and think I, I broke the, 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 the alarm clock too, but I, I slammed my fist down on the alarm clock. Oh, I forgot about the alarm <laughs> clock. So I mean, that, I thought so, that was that same day. I broke no, that, the was clock. A, that was a different argument. <laughs> no, 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 honey. That was a different oh, okay, argument. Okay, okay, we can share that later. But these are early days. And so he's mad about what I'm saying. I'm mad about my stockings. And then we're just, and we're trying to get ready to go to church, yeah, you guys. Getting we're ready we're getting church. ready to go to church. And I'm like, I can't go in the choir stand with them raggedy stockings on. <laughs> that was the only pair I had left. But I just thank the Lord that we started laughing about it because it was silly. Okay, we got ripped up stockings and now you got a ripped up shoe. So we're going to both be looking crazy going to church. But I like the fact that we stopped 
we calmed down, we started laughing about it. You see how we're laughing about it now. But God is true. The word is true. You, we are supposed to be, what does the scripture say? Where is it now? Which one you? The one we're going over. Oh, oh, uh, oh swift to let, hear. let every man be swift to hear, slow, slow to, to speak, speak, and slow to wrath. Slow so, to we, wrath. you know, if we had put that into practice, you'd have nice, your shoes wouldn't have been tore up and, well, you know, I don't know about my stockings because you didn't mean to yeah. do that. But, <laughs> but God is, is true. And uh, he's wonderful, and his word is for us. His word is for us to, to make application and to change our lives, that we may glorify God, because we don't want our wrath, because our wrath doesn't work the righteousness of God. Yeah. But when we lift the name of the Lord up, then he's always going to be glorified. Praise the Lord. So thank you again uh, for stopping by. I always say that because I'm grateful that those of you who do listen, uh, we are trying to build up our, our base here. We need more subscribers. We only get 41. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you like this video, share it with somebody, uh, comment. We would love to hear what you think about what we're doing. If there's something we can make better, I know we need to get a different background. We're going to work on that. <laughs> But if you like what you're hearing, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel, comment, like, uh, and share, because the word of God should be shared. And so again, any last words? I'm finished. All right. I've said enough. You've said enough. Okay. Uh, thank you again, and have a blessed day for the rest of your day. Amen. Thank you for stopping by. Amen.